Well, mountain bikers, here we are. We made it. We made it to the end of 2021. In fact, there's just enough time left in this year for us to put out one last episode of your favorite gear show as we ready ourselves to dive headfirst into 2022. Today, we've got a few riding packs, a tubeless kit and cross-country brakes on the menu. But before we get into any of that, time for our usual roundup of industry news with a month in a minute. Let's go! Orbea just launched the alloy version of its impressive Rise e-bike, adding battery capacity but still clocking in at under 20 kilos, which is among the lighter 540 watt hour bikes out there at present. To help you figure out where to buy it, the company also just launched its Rider Connect program, which shows current and future stock in stores. Kotic is jumping on the e-bike train as well, and although production is only planned for 2023, they are already showing off their Shimano-based prototypes. EXT just introduced the second version of their Era Enduro Fork with a floating axle design, radial lubrication pocket DU bushings, and changes to both the top-out and bottom-out devices. Enduro bearings can continues their component is the bearing approach with the launch of the new max hit bottom brackets. STG introduced a new version of their Telus dropper post lever with both lateral and reach adjustability on offer. Cane Creek wants you to know that they now have trunnion mounted versions of their DB Air and DB Coil inline shocks available. They also come with a nifty integrated tool to make trail side adjustments easier. MET just launched their 2022 helmet range with fresh new colors to keep with the times. Fox is also feeling colorful with the launch of their new decal range featuring 11 new options to spruce up your forks and shocks. Canyon went big for the launch of their new Torque with 29 inch or mullet configurations available for the free racers and park rats to choose from. It fits a water bottle too now. On the topic of big bikes, Canfield has brought out a new version of their high-pivot, idler-equipped Jedi, now featuring 29-inch wheels and reworked from the ground up. And we finish up with more high-pivot news as Eminent just dropped the drive, the company's first e-bike. It shares the suspension platform and the design cues of its non-electric brethren, but it's been entirely designed around the motor and battery. Phew, busy days in the bike industry still. Now let's slow things down a bit as we get into the reviews. First up, we've taken a look at a couple of new riding packs from POC. POC's line of protective backpacks was designed to offer riders practical and organized storage for riding essentials while doubling as a certified back protector thanks to the use of built-in protection panels. The Spine VPD Air 8 backpack sits in the middle of the range for size, weight and price, weighing 600 grams with protective back panels installed and retailing for 150 US dollars. The three ventilated panels are removable and are certified to the EN 1621-2 standard. Storage is made up of one main zippered compartment, complete with multiple internal pockets for organization and load distribution. Within this compartment is also a pocket for up to a 3-litre hydration bladder to be stored if desired, with hose routing provided through the shoulder strap. Additional storage includes zippered pockets on both sides of the backpack and easy-to-reach zippered pockets on both shoulder straps designed for phones or multi-tools. The shoulder straps are adjustable via a twin strap closure system that provides secure strap retention and ensures no strap restriction is felt around the waist. Lastly, the backpack is constructed entirely from water and dirt resistant fabric to hold up to a moderate amount of poor weather. Out on the trail, the Spine VPD Air 8 backpack is extremely comfortable, breathable and secure. The protective back panels add structure to the backpack but are malleable enough to conform to your body. The dual shoulder strap adjustments do a great job of keeping the backpack tight around your sides, while the two sternum straps keep everything secure during rough descents without restricting breathing. The large main compartment offers plenty of storage to pack essentials for big days on the bike, and the internal pockets are very useful for securing snacks, tools and other small items. The three-quarter zip design of the main compartment is also handy for digging to the bottom of your pack when fully loaded, without needing to remove multiple items. We did ride with a Camelback water bladder in the Spine VPD Air 8 backpack and enjoyed how simple it was to route the hose through the pack. The only downside is that there is no attachment to keep the end of the nozzle secure on the shoulder strap, resulting in some movement when riding. Lastly, the front strap pockets may be easily accessible, but they are relatively small and barely fit a modern smartphone. We opted to keep multi-tools in these pockets instead. Overall, the size and amount of storage the Spine Air 8 backpack provides makes it perfect for everyday trail or enduro riding. The back panels provide extra protection that does not affect the comfort of the pack and allows you to ride with a bit more peace of mind in the case of a crash. New for 2022, POC's Lamina Hip Pack offers 2 liters of compartmented storage to keep tools, snacks and other essentials secure, organized and easily accessible. Made of mostly recycled materials with VPD padding for extra protection and comfort, the Hip Pack features a large zippered compartment plus two zippered hip pockets. The main compartment features multiple storage sleeves and a compression strap to keep belongings organized and secure. There is also water-resistant zippered pockets for safe phone storage, located between the VPD padding and the main compartment. Dual adjustable straps and a large plastic buckle help keep the pack secure. On the trail, just like the backpack presented earlier, the VPD padding in the lamina does a great job of adding structure to the pack while maintaining enough flexibility to comfortably conform to your body. 
The waist straps are easily adjusted even on the go, while the large size of the buckle makes it simple to clip or undo the pack with gloves on. The size of the main compartment is quite deceiving, and we were impressed by how much we could stuff into the lamina, including snacks, tools, CO2 cartridges, wallet, and even a light rain jacket. The dedicated water-resistant phone pocket was also super handy, as it not only protects your phone, but makes accessing it hassle-free. The only downside to the lamina hip pack is the size of the zippered hip pockets. They are barely big enough to fit a power bar, and the pack also lacks the ability to carry a water bottle, potentially a deal-breaker if your bike doesn't have a bottle cage. Overall, Pock's Lamina Hip Pack is a great choice for any rider looking to pack additional items on a ride without committing to the weight or size of a backpack. The price is at the higher range of the market for comparably sized packs, but the VPD padding does provide extra peace of mind and value for money here. Tubeless technologies have gotten much better over the years, but things can still get a bit messy from time to time when seating tires and manipulating sealant. Swiss company Milkit is on a mission to make tubeless life easier, and they sent over samples of all their latest products for us to test them out. Here's how we got on. The heart of the Milkit system is the valve stem. By adding a set of rubber flaps to the tire side of the stem, Milkit has created a system where the valve core can be removed without causing the tire to lose any pressure. This means you're now free to add sealant using the Milkit syringe without having to worry about reseating the tire afterwards. This also means that the Presta valve core needs to be fitted with a small extra plunger of its own to help push open the flaps for inflating the tire. But let's take a step back and look at the whole range of products on offer, starting out with converting your wheels to tubeless. Milkit offers a tubeless rim tape in several widths, pick the one that matches your rim. The tape is pretty stiff, which makes it slightly less comfortable to work with than some others, but it's also very strong and we achieved a good seal on our first attempt. You then install the tubeless valve stem just like you would with any regular valve. To help you get the tire seated, Milkit provides the Booster, a simple aluminum bottle that can be inflated to 160 psi of pressure using a floor pump. Once inflated, you simply place the nozzle over the valve stem and press down. This releases a strong surge of air into the tire, which should see it pop into place on the rim. The bottle will inflate the tire to about 15 psi or so, usually not enough to fully seat the tire bead on the rim, but enough to hold pressure and allow you to continue inflating the tire with your floor pump. Note that you need to remove the valve core first to achieve good enough airflow to push the tire onto the rim. Compared to a similar but bigger system made by Zephal that we've been using for years, the Milkit Booster is down on volume and pressure, but still gets the job done. An added bonus is that the bottle can be used to carry drinking water, thanks to the included cap. Once you've got your tires seated and inflated, time to add the sealant. Fill the syringe from the bottle, then insert the straw through the valve stem. There is a valve on the syringe to keep it closed off until you're ready to press it, which is handy since the pressure of the air in the tire will want to push the plunger out. There's also a backstop in the syringe itself to prevent the plunger flying out and you getting covered in tubeless goo. This was actually an issue on previous iterations of the Milkit product, so we're glad to see they've addressed it here. We like to live dangerously, so we ignored the instructions to drop the tire pressure to below 20 psi before adding the sealant to see what would happen. We avoided the humiliation of a sealant shower, but it was still slightly challenging to press the plunger and get the sealant into the tire. Once you're done, simply pull the straw out again, refit the valve core, and top up the tire pressure as needed. The Milkit tubeless sealant itself works well. It was designed to stay liquid for a long time, and the extra fibers mixed into the sealant will help close off larger holes as well. All in all, the Milkit system does its job as advertised. We don't find it very hard to run tubeless the traditional way, but there are advantages to this system, in particular when it comes to topping up your sealant. Being able to just pop another dose in the tire without having to lose pressure and reseat the tire bead is pretty cool. One of the very first companies to ever put a hydraulic disc brake on a bicycle, Hope Technologies has been around the block and their latest offerings are among our absolute favorites here at Vital. When they announced a new brake for the cross-country market, we knew we had to give it a spin. As part of our testing, we also wanted to figure out if this might be a valid option for the trail bike weight weenies out there, Stay tuned to find out. The all-new lever retains Hope's traditional reservoir design, which allows for easy top-down bleeding. But on the XCR, it is oriented at a 90-degree angle with the handlebar instead of the usual Hope inline design. The lever body is much slimmer than on the Tech 3 lever and features a lever blade that is made from carbon. The lever only offers reach adjustment, which requires the use of an Allen key. The caliper itself is the same X2 caliper that was already in the lineup, but Hope made some tweaks around it as well. The crimped hose connector at the caliper end is smaller and thinner, and the pads feature an aluminum backing plate. The hose connector at the lever end retains the classic olive to facilitate shortening the hoses. All told, the complete assembly has dropped about 50 grams per side in total, compared to a Tech 3 lever X2 caliper combo. The brakes come in silver only, 
with black hoses. Installing the lever on the bar is easy thanks to the hinge clamp design and the SRAM matchmaker mounts kept our bar looking clean and tidy. The hardware is all top notch and the CNC work is impressive all around. To complete our setup, we installed Hope's own floating rotors, which have also undergone a recent facelift. In the work stand, we couldn't quite get rid of rubbing against the pads. This was when the brakes were brand new and unridden. After bedding in the pads and rotors, the rubbing went away and we were able to optimize our setup. On the trail, the lever shape is nice and the travel is consistent throughout the downhills. The lever action is very light thanks to its simple linkage-less design. Since Hope designed the XCR with low weight in mind, the lever is lacking any bite point adjustment and the lever throw is basically dependent on the space between the pads and the rotor. As far as brake power goes, there's no extra magic to be found here. We didn't feel a significant difference with the most obvious competition, which is the Shimano XTR 9100 race brake set. However, in the modulation department, we really enjoyed the performance of the XCRs on the very dry and dusty trails we tested on. Finessing the front brake is easy, and we had lots of control over the power delivery. We didn't lose grip even once due to unwanted brake locking or something like that. So then, would these brakes be ready for a little heavier action if you wanted to drop some weight from your trusty trail bike, for example? We feel like the answer is no. There is not quite enough power on tap for more demanding riding, and steep terrain might see this brake struggle a bit more with heat management. We did not experience any issues during testing, but we did not use the brakes on particularly long or steep trails. Depending on how you would define the discipline and where you ride, you could get away with running the XCR on your favorite downcountry bike to bling it out a little. As for durability, we've had the brakes out on the trail for a good few months already with no issues to report, and we'd expect nothing less. We've had great results running Hope brakes over the years, and the XCR looks like it's poised to continue that trend. We've got another hip pack to show you today, this time from PNW Components. The Rover was designed to offer organized storage in a lightweight and adjustable package. Let's take a closer look at what it has to offer. The Rover features a zippered main compartment, a dedicated phone pocket, and two small zippered waist pockets. The main compartment has three internal dividers to help keep smaller items from moving around too much inside. The supportive back panel is covered with ventilated mesh, and the main strap features a large plastic buckle and adjustments on both sides. There are also two small compression straps along the side of the main pack that can be used to adjust the volume and sink it down for extra stability. There's also a bottle holder that can be mounted on either side of the pack or removed altogether if you don't need it, which is a nice touch, especially at this price point. Once we started packing the Rover, much like with the POC lamina we covered earlier, we were surprised by how much cargo we could fit in it. It doesn't look all that big, but we were able to comfortably fit a spare tube, tools, a small pump, a CO2 canister, a first aid kit, tubeless plugs, and a small packable windbreaker. The phone pocket provides peace of mind with extra padding, although being on the outside of the pack, it does sit in an exposed spot. The two small side pockets are not all that useful. They're pretty small and not very elastic. You can put your keys here, for example, if you don't have too many of them. A credit card and some cash for the post-ride burrito will also fit, of course. On the trail, the Rover is comfortable and stable in action. The small straps on the side help sink it down to really optimize the stability, and the relatively wide waist strap does a good job holding on. There are Velcro tabs you can use to take up the slack in the strap and really lock everything down here. Even when fully loaded, we didn't feel like the pack would bounce around too much without having to crank it down like crazy. The rear panel is pretty thick, which helps the pack keep its shape and also keeps any hard objects from poking you in the back. The mesh material used on the inside is comfortable against the body and breathes just about as well as you could expect here. The buckle is solid and the zippers are easy to grab hold of, even with gloves on. The water bottle holder works well enough, although it's tricky to manipulate and putting the bottle back after drinking is pretty hard to do with just one hand. Still, it's a useful addition and one that makes a lot of sense for this type of pack. You can also use it to store other items if your bottle sits on your bike already. All in all, we like the Rover for its comfort and modularity, and at 69 US dollars, it's fairly competitively priced as well. Okay then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails and happy holidays. We'll see you in 2022.